in its annual administrative report 2021 to 2022 tabled in the recently concluded state assembly session Nagaland's school education department reports 4410 untrained teachers in government schools in Nagaland districts wise Dimapur records highest number of untrained teachers at 710 followed by Twensang with 682 and Mon with 631 Record breaking spree of fuel prices continue to take a toll across Nagaland as the state witnessed series of high while petrol price stands at rupees 101.97 and 103.08 per liter in Dimapur and Kohima diesel prices goes up to rupees 88.51 and 89.40 respectively unstoppable fuel prices continue to break records in Nagaland Western Sumi Baptist Akukulu Kugakulu organizes a church leaders' revival at Daniel Village Millennium Hall. The three-day program long initiated in order for church leaders to experience a fresh revival. To resolve 50-year-old boundary dispute, Assam and Meghalaya government signs Memorandum of Understanding in presence of Union Home Minister Amit Shah in Delhi. As per the time packed Assam to get 18.51 square kilometers and 18.28 square kilometers to allotted to Meghalaya belonging to 6 out of 12 disputed areas. In another effort to de-escalate tensions, Russian and Ukrainian negotiators began face-to-face -face talks in Turkey's capital Istanbul on Tuesday. The new round of talks comes after Russia said it would begin focusing on eastern Ukraine in the move some analysts say as a scaling back of Moscow's ambitions. Hello viewers, I'm Rinki Gogoi and you're welcome to NLTV Primetime News. Let's see more of the news in details. Simli Hakun, a minister of the Isaac Muiva faction of the National Socialist Council of Nagaland, NSCNIM, tasked with collecting revenue for the militant outfit in Changlang district, has been arrested by the Arunachal Pradesh police. Inspector General of Police Chuku Apa said that Hakun was arrested by a joint team of the SIT and Changlang Police on March 25, while there are some counterparts also assisted the team in the operation. The special investigation team was led by SP Rohit Rajbir Singh, while SP Mihin Gambo headed the Changlang Police. The team reached in Sukia, Assam on March 25, acting on credible intelligence input and managed to track Hakun's hideout. He was later arrested by the team with the support of Tinsukia police. Moreover, an amount of rupees 2.18 lakhs, two mobile phones and three SIM cards have been recovered from him. It may be mentioned that there are two at least cases of Extortion and criminal intimidations, one each at the Changlang and Itanagar police stations, against the NSC and IM leader, the IG informed. As per the annual administrative reports 2021 to 2022 tabled by the Nagaland School Education Department in the recently concluded Nagaland Assembly session, there are a total of 4,410 untrained teachers in the state of Nagaland. The list of untrained teachers is a combination of primary, upper primary, secondary and higher secondary level. District-wise, Dimapur has the highest number of untrained teachers at 710, followed by Twensang 682, Mon at 631, Zunheboto with 586, Mokokchung at 369, Kipure 322, Woka 270, Peren 265, Peg 244, Kohima 223 and Longlang with 108. 
The untrained teachers in the primary section are the highest with 2,179, followed by the upper primary at 1,586, secondary at 524, and higher secondary at 121. The overall percentage of the trained teacher is 77% for both primary and upper primary, secondary at 78% and higher secondary at 81%. The record-breaking spree of fuel prices continued on March across Nagaland as the state recorded another hike on March 29. With Tuesday's hike, petrol price in Dimapur increased from Rs. 101.13 to Rs. 101.97 per litre and diesel price surged from 87.81 to Rs. 88.51 per litre. On the other hand, the fuel rates in Kohima district noted hike from Rs. 102.24 to Rs. 103.08 per litre, while the diesel price increased from 88.70 to Rs. 89.40 per litre. Western Sumi Baptist Akukuho Kukakulu organizes a church leaders' revival at Daniel Village Millennium Hall. The program commenced on March 29, 3 p.m. and will conclude on the 31st of March. The program has been initiated in order for the church leaders to experience fresh revival. The preacher for the program is the URF director of Zunheboto and will be the sole speaker in the program. The officials while speaking to NLTV stated that at least turn up of 5 to 700 people are expected. Revival could be Pab Chamal experience could be joy experience could be Kiman Kui Takisha Golibi, itu no hobo, itu karene amagan today. We are organizing a church leaders' revival. Maybe this could be the first of its kind in the history of WSBK. Under the theme, one thing. It will be one thing I desire from the Lord. It will Bible verse. One thing. One revival. It will program. Rakiyase. Aji aman tin baji pra aman la program suro bo aro. Kali morning till evening and day after tomorrow. Amagan inka program loi jabul hase. Itu program karene amagan revival experience kurubo lage amagan church leaders. Itu bhavna kuri ke na amagan amagan nije bitor prabi preaching kurubo le para manubi bishya se holeu. The closing ceremony of the second Dimapur Youth Knockout Football Ceremony was held on Monday around 10 a.m. at DDSC Ground Dimapur. The program was organized by the Jaffu Market Area and the closing ceremony was graced by the President of CD Tower Business Owners Welfare Association and Vice President of Hazi Park Business Welfare Association V. Kekoto Awomi along with the National Executive Members of BJP Youth Wing in charge Arvind Damani. Vice President of NDPP Nagaland, Tokheli Kihon, and President of All Assam Minorities Students Union, Karbi Yanglong District Committee, Mazid Khan, as a special guest. The final match was played between a club, Dimapu versus Hazi Park Stark FC, where the Hazi Park FC won the match with one goal. Let's have a look. Apart from that, I want to thank, I want to thank all the guests out there, special invitees out here. The NSC and IM UT through a notification informed that all the discos, pubs and night uh, clubs within the UT jurisdiction should shut operations with immediate effect. Notably, the praise note also stated that gathering of people at night will also be prohibited 
particularly in the state stadium. Agri Expo, Fort Mile and other such places where they indulge in alcohol consumptions, illegal drugs and immoral activities, creating nuisance in the area and occasionally resulting in the violence were also prohibited. Furthermore, UT also informed that its personnel and staff would conduct checking in the mansion places regularly, adding that the defaulters will be liable for strict action. It is to be mentioned that for more information, one could contact UT office at 977-447-7952. Among the nine Himalayan states, Nagaland has ranked sixth in the fraud-related cases and conning people through internet banking. At the top of the table is Uttarakhand with 775 crimes related to the fraud in the last four years, followed by Himachal Pradesh with 284 cases, 188 in Tripura, 101 in Arunachal Pradesh, 77 in Meghalaya, 70 in Nagaland, 48 in Sikkim, 46 in Manipur, and 16 in Mizoram. Notably, Nagaland reported three cases of fraud in the year 2018 to 2019, which was followed by 32 cases in the year 2019 to 2021, and four cases in the year 2021 to 2022. On Tuesday, Assam Chief Minister Hemondo Bishwasarma and Meghalaya Chief Minister Conrad Sangma signed a memorandum of understanding to resolve the 50-year-old boundary disputes in six of the 12 areas between the two states in New Delhi. The agreement was signed in the presence of Union Home Minister Amit Shah and Chief Secretaries of both the states, as well as the other officials at the Office of the Union Ministry and Home Affairs. Earlier, Union Home Minister Amit Shah, along with the Chief Ministers of Assam and Meghalaya, held a final round of discussion before signing the actual Memorandum of Understanding, where they finalized a draft resolution of the two states towards settling their 50-year-old pending boundary disputes. It is to be mentioned that the six areas taken up in the first phase are Tarabari, Gizang, Hahim, Bokalapara, Kanapara, Pilankata and Ratachira, falling under West Kasi Hills, Riboy and East Jaintia Hills, districts of Meghalaya and Kachar, Kamrup Metro and Kamrup districts of Assam, covering an area of 36.79 square kilometers. According to the recommendations, 18.51 square kilometers will go to Assam and 18.28 square kilometers will go to Meghalaya. Meanwhile, Assam CM Hemonto stated that the second phase of talks to resolve the next six disputed areas will be done in the coming six to seven months, which will be followed by discussions on border disputes with Arunachal Pradesh, Nagaland and Mizoram. Both the chief ministers thanked the Union Home Minister for directing them to resolve border disputes in northeast states to make a center of growth in Jin. वो 12 पॉइंट में से 6 पॉइंट पर आसाम और मेघालय के बीच में समझौता हुआ है और सीमा की लंबाई की दृष्टि से देखें तो करीब करीब 70 प्रतिशत सीमा आज विवाद मुक्त हो गई है मेघालय का साथ हमारा 12 जगह पे डिफरेंस ऑफ ओपिनियन था हमने ये निर्णय किया कि एक साथ अगर 12 को ही हम सुलझाने का कोशिश करो तो शायद ये सुलझना मुश्किल होगा लेकिन हम एक-एक करके इसको सुलझ सुलझने के लिए कोशिश करो तो ये शायद हमन समाधान हो जाएगा हमने एक-एक करके शुरू किया दोनों सरकार का ओर से 
ग्रुप ऑफ मिनिस्टर्स बने सीमा में गया लोगों से बातचीत किया और से डिस्प्यूटेड साइड का हमने समाधान निकालने में सफल हुआ बाकी और जो से डिस्प्यूटेड साइट रह गया है तुरंत ये अकॉर्ड हो जाने के बाद ये मेमोरेंडम ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग हो जाने के बाद हम लोग तुरंत सेकेंड फेज का काम शुरू करेगा और अगले से सात महीना में सेकेंड फेज मतलब जो बाकी से डिस्प्यूटेड साइट रह गया उनका भी सॉल्यूशन करने के लिए हम लोग पूरा प्रयास करेगा एंड वंस अगेन सर आई थैंक आर ऑनरेबल चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ असम एंड यू सर बिकॉज ऑफ योर लीडरशिप एंड बिकॉज ऑफ द डायरेक्शन दैट यू गेव दैट वी आर एबल टू कम हियर टुडे एंड कंक्लूड द फर्स्ट फेज ऑफ द सिक्स लोकेशन वी विल डू आर बेस्ट सर टू सी एंड टू इंश्योर दैट वी आर एबल टू कम्प्लीट द अदर लोकेशन The fifth edition of the Prime Minister's Interaction Program, Pariksha Pe Charcha, will be held on 1st April in New Delhi in a town hall interactive format from Talakotara Stadium at 11 a.m. where crowds of students, teachers and parents from India and abroad will be participating virtually. The event will be live telecasted on Doordarshan radio channels, TV channels, digital media including YouTube channels of Edu Mine of India, Narendra Modi, PM India, PIB India, Doordarshan National, MyGov India, DD News, Rajya Sabha TV, Swayam Prabha, Pariksha Pe Charcha. It is a program much awaited annual event in which the prime minister responds to questions related to examination stress and related areas posed by students in his uniquely engaging style in a live program. Notably the students, teachers and parents who will get to ask questions to the prime ministers will be shortlisted on the basis of online creative writing competition on a bouquet of themes. The competition was organized from 28 December 2021 till 3 February 2022 through MyGov platform. Over 15.7 lakh participants registered this year for the creative writing competition. Moreover, the participants selected through competitions on MyGov will be presented with a certificate of appreciation and a special Pariksha Pe Charcha kit comprising of Exam Warriors book written by the Prime Minister himself. Chang Wedoshi Set Chang on March 28 locked the executive engineer PWD Twensang Division office asking the Nagaland Public Work Department engineer in chief to clarify as to why the construction of the mechanical engineer office building and workshop residence for PWD additional chief engineer have been left incomplete even after 16 years CWS even sought response within the 15 days with effect from February 19 but the department has failed to respond henceforth the office of the PWD Twensang will be locked indefinitely until the office receive the reason CWS president C Pong Su and GS Ibo Naset states that as per the letter issued on March 28 the conference will not be held responsible for any untoward situations A new coaching center named Scholar Academy was inaugurated in Dimapur on January 13, 2022. Notably, the coaching institute offers coaching for IIT, JEE mains and advance. The institute also offers coaching for class 9 and 11 repeaters from CBSE, ICSE and NBSE board respectively. 
Team Anal TV on Tuesday spoke with the senior counselor of the academy, Odi Jungla Imchen, and assistant Ilino Jimo, and said that all the faculty members of the institute are highly experienced and meanwhile they also gave a demo class of the institute. It may be mentioned that the reason behind the demo classes were to show as to how the institute runs, so that the students can have a look and enroll themselves accordingly. The newly opened coaching centre is located at 4th floor of Galleria Complex near St. Mary Higher Secondary School, Dimapur. Scholar Academy is a coaching institute and um, we provide coaching classes for NEET, JEE and for board exams also. Besides many other professional courses uh, for entrance examinations, for competitive examinations like MPSC, UPSC, but our main focus as of now is for JEE and NEET. And uh, about the academy, actually the director and the board members of the academy, they, they're they all from educational background only and they've been in this field for quite long, which is why they have witnessed many problems faced by the students and have come up with curriculum to help tackle those problems. Behind this demo class was to make sure the students know what they're getting themselves into. Like supposedly a student gets enrolled in a lot of the coaching centers and in the later months they, they don't like the coaching institute much or they are not satisfied enough with the faculty. So we know that uh, coaching centers, I mean, um, it's not it's non refundable. That, that's the rule in most coaching classes, coaching centers. So uh, which is why we've, we've come up with these demo classes to make sure the students know what they are doing, what they are getting themselves into. When they come for demo classes, they will get to meet the faculty, the members, uh, the teaching staffs, everyone. They will get to have a better knowledge about the academy. And when that happens, the, both the parents and the students are sure what they are doing. And uh, you know that that uh, we believe that helps that, that helps the student, and then uh, that will also prolong the um, relationship between the academy and the student. And yeah, that's. The new office building of the Block Development Officer was inaugurated on Monday at the Project Colony in Woka. Furthermore, Minister for Rural Development Metsubo Jamir, after inaugurating the building, urged the people to extend their cooperation and support to the government and the department to bring about more developmental programs for the benefit of the rural population. Meanwhile, ADC Woka Langkon Seng Tsangsi thanked the department for providing the BDO office with a new building. Training on biofertilizer production units held a three-day training program from March 24 to 26 at Bio-Organic Quality Control Laboratory at District Soil Conservation Office in Dimapur. Notably, the training was held under the team Mother Culture Maintainers, Mass Production and Storage of Biofertilizer for Promotion of Organic Farming in Northeast India. It is to be mentioned that the training program was organized by the College of Postgraduate Studies in Agricultural Science, CAU, Impal Umiyam, Meghalaya, and was sponsored by the Director Extension Division. Meanwhile, Dr. Dwipendra Takuria, Dr. Juri Sandhya Barik, and Dr. Sapu Sankija graced the training as the resource persons. Assam, Arunachal Pradesh and Meghalaya with the rest of the parts of the Northeast India are set to experience a continuous active wet spell at least until April 1. The India Meteorological Department has forecast a light to moderate intensity scattered rainfall across Northeast India for the next two days. The increment conditions will continue with a likelihood of fairly widespread showers over the region from March 30 to April 1. In addition, the Northeast region will also face the brunt of rough conditions in the form of thunderstorms, lightning and gusty winds blowing at a speed of 30 to 40 km per hour this week. With the prevalence of rough conditions, a yellow watch has been issued over Assam, 
Meghalaya, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram and Tripura on March 28. From Wednesday onwards, the alert will extend to all the northeastern states. The Yellow Watch urges residents to be aware of the local situations and it will continue until April 1. The Regional Meteorological Department in Guwahati has issued a Yellow Watch over several districts of Nagaland, which includes Paran, Dimapur, Kohima, Woka, Mokokchung, Mon and Longleng. The famous bridge Jinking Jiri, also known as the Living Road Bridge, cultural landscapes of Meghalaya, has been included in the UNESCO World Heritage Site tentative list. Meghalaya Chief Minister Conrad Sangma was delighted to share the good news from his Twitter account and also congratulated all the community members and stakeholders who has been part of the ongoing journey. At present, there are about 100 known living road bridges spread across 72 villages in the state of Meghalaya. Masked men mercilessly attacks men identified as Rajesh Walling near Gangtok's Sadar police station. Video of the incident is being spread across all social media platforms by the Sikkim Democratic Front. Victim identified as Rajesh Walling is also the SDF party's East District convener. The video shows police personnel arriving minutes after the attackers had dispersed. The incident took place on Monday near Sadar police station in Gangtok. SDF supporters were being gathering outside the police station demanding arrest of the attackers while accusing Sikkim's Krantikari Mocha party of carrying the attack. In an attempt to doom the mercurial rise of the Bharatiya Janata Party in recent times, Trinamul Congress Supremo and West Bengal Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee has written a letter to all the non-BJP leaders and requested them to unite to fight against BJP's direct attacks on democracy. In the letter, the Trinamul Congress chief said that the need of the hour is for all progressive forces in the country to come together and fight this oppressive force. She also called for a meeting to discuss strategies to take on the BJP and commit to the cause of a unified and principled opposition that will make a way for the government that the country deserves. She also alleged that the Saffron Party has time and again repeatedly attacked the federal structure of the country and now it's time to unitedly fight this oppressive regime. The record-breaking spree of fuel prices continued on March across India as petrol and diesel prices hiked yet again on Sunday, which is the fifth increase in the six days. Notably, petrol will now be drearer by 50 pies a litre and diesel by 55 pies a litre. According to price notification of state fuel retailers in Delhi, petrol will now cost Rs 99.11 per litre, while diesel rates have gone up to Rs 90.42 per litre. It may be mentioned that prices had been on a freeze since November, four days or four months ahead of the assembly elections in five states. However, after the elections, four increments of 80 pies each were recorded and with the latest hike on Sunday means petrol will now cost Rs 3.70 more and diesel Rs 3.75 more per litre as compared to the prices six days back.
Prime Minister Narendra Modi is all set to virtually address the party workers at the week-long development activities for the Bharatiya Janta Party's 42nd Foundation Day on April 6. Notably, the week-long celebrations will culminate on Ambedkar Jayanti on April 14. It may be mentioned that some of the events that the workers have been directed to organize include cleaning legs, blood donation camps, health checkups and vaccination camps. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday virtually participated in the GRI provision of about 5.21 lakh beneficiaries of the Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Gramin in Madhya Pradesh. The function also witnessed traditional celebrations with conch, lamp, flowers and rangoli being organized in new houses across Madhya Pradesh. Notably, under this scheme, all eligible homeless families and families living in kacha houses will be provided with pakka houses equipped with all the basic facilities for the year 2024. It is to be mentioned that people living in plain areas are provided rupees 1 lakh to 20,000 per house, while rupees 1 lakh 30,000 is an integrated action plan for the tribal and backward districts. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday virtually addressed Mota Dharma Maha Mela 2022 organized at Sridham Thakuranagar in West Bengal's Thakurbari. Notably, Matua Dharma Maha Mela 2022 is being organized on the occasion of the 211th birth anniversary of Sri Sri Harichand Thakur. It is to be mentioned that the Maha Mela is being organized by All India Motua Maha Sangha, beginning which begins on Tuesday. The event will culminate on April 5 and it may be mentioned that Harichand Thakur devoted all his life to the cause of betterment of the oppressed, downtrodden and deprived persons in undivided Bengal during the pre-independence area. According to a release by the Prime Minister's office, the social and religious movement started by him originated from Orakandi, now in Bangladesh, in 1860 and led to the formation of the Matua Dharma. A Delhi court on Monday granted bail to the Bully Buy app case in accused Niraj Bishnoi and Suli Deals app creator Om Karishwar Thakur on humanitarian grounds. The court considered that the accused are first time offenders and continued incarceration would be detrimental to the overall well being. The court had imposed strict conditions on the accused person so that they could not threaten any witness and temper any evidence. The conditions include that the accused person would not try to contact, influence, induce any of the victims. The Deputy Commissioner of Police KPS Malhotra also stated that the forensic science laboratory results and replies from the intermediaries were awaited, which is why bail was granted by the court. Amid the decline in COVID-19 cases, the central government is considering the removal of the coronavirus awareness and precautions caller tune. Notably, this comes as the government has received representations that the COVID-19 pre-call messages have served their intended purpose and are delaying critical calls during emergencies. Meanwhile, Department of the Telecommunications has requested the Union Health Ministry to drop these coronavirus-related announcements, citing representations received from the Cellular Operators Association of India, as well as mobile subscribers. It is to be mentioned that the COVID-19 caller tune was started two years ago when the pandemic hit the country.
Government of Delhi has decided to switch over to the electric vehicles from petrol and CNG once and for all official purposes to inspire and set an example to the people and push them to adopt EVS. After nearly seven months, the committee formed to prepare policy for the purchase, hire and leverage of electric vehicles have come up with the revised guidelines and fixed net dealer price at Rs 4.75 lakhs. According to NDP, bureaucrats and officials will purchase vehicles within the given price range. As per the revised guidelines, all leased and hired cars used for the commute of GNCTD officers shall be electric cars and department guarantee institutions. AUTC bodies will decide the type of electric vehicles at their own level on the basis of the resources availability. All the departments have also been directed to seek approval from the finance department for the first time while hiring EVS and then process them on their own during the extension period of the contracts. The transport department has been appointed as the nodal body to monitor the progress. Ukrainian negotiators began to face-to-face -face talks in Istanbul on Tuesday over the month-long invasion of Ukraine. Notably, the two sides were welcomed by Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan, while who urged them to put an end to this tragedy. The new round of talks comes after the Russian army said it would begin focusing on the eastern Ukraine in a move to scale Moscow's ambitions. It may be mentioned that Russia's month-long invasion of Ukraine, the biggest European conflict since the World War II, has seen over 3.8 million Ukrainians fleeing abroad, left thousands dead or injured, and isolated Russia's economy. Again, Russian President Vladimir Putin has vowed to trash Ukraine ahead of the another round of peace talks between the two countries who have been locked in the worst armed conflict in Europe for over a month. Russia and Ukraine are due to sit down for another round of talks in Turkey on Tuesday, with an improved humanitarian situation as the minimum goal. Meanwhile, the Ukraine Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba said that the maximum outcome is a stable ceasefire. On the other hand, Joe Biden stated that he won't apologize for Vladimir Putin for calling him can't remain in power comment. Biden further added that he wasn't voicing a policy change, but that he was expressing an opinion based on his emotions from the day. Biden claimed that he was expressing moral outrage at the way Putin was handling Ukraine crisis. Ukraine on Tuesday asked Russia to end war over the talks held in Turkey, Istanbul. In the backdrop of the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine, India and U.S. will hold a two-day dialogue meet on April 11 to further cement defense and political ties, as well as exchange notes on Ukraine and Indo-Pacific theaters of concern. Indian Defense Minister Rajnath Singh and External Affairs Minister S. Jai Shankar will meet U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken and the Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin, who are expected to share the American assessment of the Ukraine war. Notably, the two powerhouse nations will also share assessments on the Indo-Pacific, with the Chinese Navy growing by the day and PLA dragging its feet on the restoring peace and tranquility on the East Ladakh LSC. 
India and U.S. are also expected to increase the defense cooperation and discuss Afghanistan with the Taliban, continuing with regressive measures and hardline implementation of Islamic laws by keeping girls out of schools and women out of jobs. Indian External Affairs Minister S. Jai Shankar participated in the 18th Bimstek Ministerial Meeting in Colombo on Tuesday. The meeting emphasized on commitment to intensify and expand areas of cooperation, especially on connectivity, energy and maritime cooperation. The BIMSTAG is a regional multilateral organization with members from littoral and adjacent areas of the Bay of Bengal. During the meet, EAM Jay Shankar said that India will encourage active business collaborations and common projects including combating terrorism, violent extremism, transnational crime, cyber attacks and narcotic trafficking. Amid economic crisis in Sri Lanka, a journalist on Tuesday tweeted that all scheduled surgeries at the Peradeniya Hospital Sri Lanka were suspended due to shortage of medicines. That only emergency surgeries were taking place and replying to the tweet, Indian Foreign Minister Jai Shankar expressed his grief and extended his help to the neighbouring nation. The Japanese government has decided to impose a ban on the exportation of the luxury goods to Russia, including premium cars and precious stones from April 5 will be banned. Notably, the economy minister Koichi Haguida told reporters about the ban. Earlier, Japan imposed an export ban on almost 300 items of goods and technologies on Russia. Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett has postponed his visit to India a day after testing positive for COVID-19. The spokesperson of Israel Embassy in India, Mohamed Haib, on Tuesday informed that India's visit would be rescheduled. Bennett tested positive for coronavirus on Tuesday, after which his office informed that he is feeling well and will continue to work while self-isolating at home. The Israeli Prime Minister had announced his first official visit to India earlier this month at the invitation of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. During his visit, Bennett was supposed to meet Prime Minister Modi and other senior government officials to discuss the strengthening of cooperation in a variety of areas including innovation, economy, research and development, agriculture and more. Bennett was also scheduled to meet members of the Jewish community in India. Actor Will Smith offered apologies on Monday to Chris Rock for smacking the comedian during the Oscars ceremony. The apology comes after the Academy of Motion Pictures and Sciences said that it was launching a formal review of the incident. Smith, who was named Best Actor on the Night, marched on the stage during the ceremony and hit Rock over a joke about his wife Jada Pinkett Smith's hair. Pinkett Smith has been suffering from alopecia, a condition that causes hair loss and had a closely cropped head at the ceremony. The 94th Academy Awards was in its final hour when actor and comedian Rock equipped the Pinkett Smith appeared ready to star in G.I. Jane 2, a film about a female soldier who has shaved a hat. Smith at first appearing to laugh at the joke but later walked onto the stage and smacked Rock with an open hand.
BTS youngest member Jungkook tested positive for COVID-19 on Monday after reaching U.S. days ahead of Las Vegas concert at Grammys. Meanwhile, agency Big Hit Music said that Jungkook's participation in the later schedule in the United States will be determined by the local regulations on COVID-19. It may also be mentioned that Jungkook took down to his Instagram account on Tuesday to assure his fans that he is doing all right after the diagnosis. In a brief audio message posted on a black screen on Instagram stories, Jungkook said that he is fine and it's nothing of a big deal. Thank you viewers. That's all from NLTV Primetime News. I'm Rinki Gogoi signing off for more updates. Keep watching Nagaland TV. Sobmanulagawas. Nagaland TV, Sop Manulaga Awas. Watch us live on Geo TV and on your television set as well. For Dimapur viewers, we are on channel number 10 in Global Chapter and